Hello, welcome to Learning Studio. In this video we will learn about reasoning and methods of reasoning which include inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. First of all what is reasoning? So reasoning is defined as the action of taking about something in a logical, sensible way. Being able to deal with real issues in our lives means using inductive reasoning extensively but this is not the only type of reasoning. Let's see what inductive and deductive reasoning are. Deductive reasoning is a process by which we come to a certain and specific logical conclusion starting from general premises. Another name for deductive reasoning is deductive logic. This process was first documented by Aristotle in the 4th century BC. Here is an example of deductive reasoning. All fish needs water to survive. My pet Nemo is a fish. Nemo needs water to survive. There are two things which can help you recognize the deductive reasoning. An important characteristic of deductive reasoning is that the conclusion must be 100% certain. If we find that the conclusion is incorrect then we need to revisit the premise and figure out which one is false. If Nemo doesn't need water to survive maybe Nemo is not a fish. For deductive reasoning to work all the premises must be true. The second characteristic has to do with the concept of general to specific. Let's analyze these three premises by pointing out if they are from general to specific. All fish needs water to survive. It's a general premise. My pet Nemo is a fish. This is a specific premise. Nemo needs water to survive. This is a specific conclusion. So the approach in deductive reasoning is top-down approach because we move from general to specific. Moving to the next method, inductive reasoning. It is a process by which we come to a probable conclusion starting from specific observation. This method of reasoning came about much later than deductive reasoning with early modern philosopher Francis Bacon in 1620 who stated that, the natural world can only be uncovered by using process of inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is absolutely essential in today's world to see one of the important models of argument. Here is an example of inductive reasoning. Josie loves reading. Josie is a good student. Good student love reading. You can probably see some differences to deductive reasoning. First of all probability. This conclusion that the good student love reading is not certain. At most we can say that it is probable, we might find a couple of good students who do not love reading, maybe they read because they know it's important. Let's also look at the phrases from specific to general perspective. Josie loves reading. This is a specific observation. Josie is a good student. This is also a specific observation. Good student love reading. This is a general conclusion. Let's see another example. Josie is afraid of dogs, cats and snakes. Josie is afraid of all animals. As you can tell most of the inductive reasoning conclusions cannot be proven with certainty. Some of them are at most probable and a lot of them need more data to support the truth of the conclusion. Let's try and flip them into deductive argument. So in an inductive argument I would say, Josie is afraid of dogs, cats and snakes. This is a claim and it's specific. So Josie is afraid of all animals. This is a conclusion and it's general. Changing it into deductive argument it could look like this. Josie is afraid of all animals. This is a general claim, observation. Josie is afraid of dogs, cats and snakes. This is a conclusion and it's specific. Be mindful of valid and invalid strong or weak arguments provided that the claim is true in the deductive reasoning example we reach a conclusion which is 100% certain so we have a valid argument. An invalid argument could be one where although the claims are true but the conclusion is false. Consider this. All Americans like pizza. Jew likes noodles. Jew is not an American. In this example although both the premises are true but the conclusion makes an invalid assumption. In this case the conclusion is an overall generalization. By contrast the conclusion in inductive reasoning example may or may not be true. So in the case of inductive reasoning it's not a matter valid or invalid arguments rather a matter of strong or weak reasoning. If I say, John father is Danish. He has blonde hairs. All Danish people have blonde hairs. This is a rather weak argument we would need more data to support a conclusion. To summarize always remember the characteristics of deductive and inductive arguments. The process of scientific exploration is one of the reiteration of these methods the aim is to become better at both. This will engage both parts of your brain associated with these processes. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to Learning Studio.